So let's let's look at the this effective density of state mass. So I'll pull up uh, I'll pull up maybe you know this uh, this website this Russian website, and uh, it has you know all the band parameters for silicon. And if I scroll down, so I need to scroll down, and it has density of states and you know a lot of other good stuff. But the thing I'm interested in today is my effective density of state mass. So for my silicon, my effective density of state mass uh, for uh, for uh, for uh, for electrons is given by 0.36, and my effective density of state mass for holes is given by 0.81. So let me evaluate this formula. So what I need to do is evaluate this for this this term. And this term is essentially 3 by 4 into kT. And let's say I'm at, at a temperature of 300 Kelvin. And at 300 Kelvin, I know that kT is roughly equivalent to 25 milli electron volt. And then I have a natural log of my whole effective mass, which is 0.81, divided by my electron uh, density of state effective mass, which is 0.36. So let's evaluate this term. So let me pull up a calculator here. So I can evaluate, I can evaluate 0.81 divided by 0.36. And I'll take a log of that. So let me take a natural log of that. And I'm going to multiply it by 25 and then multiply it by 0.75. So this gives me that my my this gives it a value of approximately 15 milli electron volt. So what it says is that my intrinsic any uh, intrinsic uh, uh, energy level it's located at the mid band gap plus a value of 15 milli electron volt for for the case of silicon. Let's also see what what happens in gallium arsenide. So gallium arsenide, we know that it has uh, it has usually a large asymmetry between the electrons and holes. So let's look at you know what are the values for gallium arsenide as well. So let me look it up for gallium arsenide. And so so gallium arsenide for 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 electrons, it has a density of state mass of 0.063. For holes, it has an effective density of state mass of 0.53. So let me, let me write it down. So 0.53 and 0 0.063. So I'll, I'll get the same terms. So 3 by 4 into 25 milli electron volt into log of, log of 0.53 divided by 0 0.063. So note that, you know, in the case of gallium arsenide, the electrons have a much lower effective density of state mass and the holes have a much higher effective density of state mass. So now let's evaluate this as well. So I have, I have log 0.53 divided by 0 0.063. And then I take a natural log of that and then multiply it by 25, multiply it by 0.75. So I get around 40 milli electron volt. So in both cases, my, my position of my intrinsic uh, energy level, it's very close to the mid band gap. And in the case of silicon, it's uh, 15 milli electron volt higher. And in the case of gallium arsenide, it's uh, it's it's 40 milli electron volt higher. So let's go back to our original question, which was posed to us. So let's go back over here. So now, in what I've discovered is that my intrinsic energy level for both my silicon and gallium arsenide it's very close to the mid band gap, but it's located slightly close to slightly close to the conduction band, and this difference is equal to 15 milli electron volt for silicon, which is not a huge difference if you compare it with the band gap. Silicon has a band gap of 1.12 eV, or you know, 1120 milli electron volt. So it's a small, small uh, as compared to the band gap of silicon. Similarly, for gallium arsenide, this is located 
close to the conduction band and this is 40 milli electron volt away from the mid band gap so which is again which is again small as compared to the band gap of gallium arsenide which is you know roughly around 1.4 electron volt and let me end with you know give you some food of thought of why this why this uh, intrinsic uh, energy level in in my in my semiconductor it moves towards the conduction band or you know it edges slightly towards the conduction band so we already saw from the mathematics that it depends upon the density of state uh, density of state uh, in the valence and uh, conduction band and we saw both for uh, both for uh, silicon and gallium arsenide that my um, my holes have a higher density of state mass as compared to electrons. So I have higher density of states available inside the valence band as compared to the as compared to what I have in the conduction band. And what I'm seeing is as a result of that, as a result of that, which is coming from the mathematics as we derived from this video, that this, this Fermi energy is moving closer to the conduction band. And, you know, you can think about it why this is the case, you know, think about it from the perspective of uh, Fermi distribution and so on. And we'll, we'll discuss those concepts more, more in the, in the next videos, eventually in the next videos.